Okay, now, first question is, is apoptosis of cancer cells a good thing or is it food for cells? Uh, there we go. Um, that's, I, get, I think I understand that question. Apoptosis, I'm sure you've all heard the word. I'm not sure if you all know what it means exactly, but uh, you know, it's, um, it's called, the other name for it is called programmed cellular death. And so cells have a certain number of times that they can divide and all that sort of thing. And um, when they become damaged somehow, um, there are two basic mechanisms. There's an extrinsic mechanism that comes from the outside and an intrinsic mechanism that comes from the inside of the cell. Both of them send signals which wind up activating certain um, enzymes called uh, caspases which initiate the recycling of a cell. So apoptosis is how, in fact, it's, you know, during, during normal development in the embryo, it's happening really a lot. As you're a growing child, it's happening really a lot. <clears throat> in other words, cells that are have over, uh, they no longer are necessary are being repro uh, recycled and reprogrammed. <clears> the <throat> recycled, I mean, not reprogrammed, recycled. So basically, um, you know, organelles are, are conserved. Um, um, certain molecules are conserved, and there's no, there's no. Um, um, spillage of damaging materials out of a cell into the tissues. So it's a very clean way of recycling and eliminating cells. And remember how important this is, you guys, because we make 37 million new cells per second, which means we're also recycling 37 million new cells per second. That's pretty intense. All right, that's very intense. Let me move you guys closer so that we can make this more whatever. Yeah. Hey, whoever you moved over on Facebook, I mean, if you could send a message out to the rest of the people just so they could know about this, because, um, and anyway, someday someone's going to save me from this IT nightmare. All right, so, so apoptosis, so uh, a really important concept. Um, it's basically part of the whole entire homeostatic mechanism that we all know about, right? It's how, cell, uh, it's how bo organisms remain um, intact and balanced in spite of what happens to them. Okay, so um, it, it's an, you know, normal cell turnover is apoptosis, right? During the proper development and the functioning of the immune system, apoptosis is necessary. So it's, that's very important, so with cancer, okay? Um, and um, um, the other kind of cell death is called necrosis. Necrosis is, it shares a lot of same pathways, chemical pathways, as uh, apoptosis. However, necrosis is not organized. Necrosis is when a cell gets damaged and the, what happens with necrosis, basically, is that the cell gets damaged in a way so quickly that it doesn't act, it can't activate all of the mechanisms to recycle components that are necessary, and the cell winds up spilling its uh, enzymes, especially from lysozymes. Remember, lysozymes are these little organelles that are inside cells that really dissolve and kill and eat up bacteria, uh, things that they call viruses, uh, and they also recycle mitochondria, anything that's no longer needed in the cell. So lysozymes are the mouth, the, eat, the thing that eats during what we call autophagy or autophagy. Okay, so lysozymes. Anyway, when they spill out into the circulation or in the interstitial fluid, when a cell, when a cell is, uh, dies by necrosis, by damage like that, with poisons, with a like with a uh, radiation right things like that okay if you get a lot of those cells doing that you will get really really sick and that's uh, by the way that's one of the uh, 
Uh, uh, you've heard me talk in the past about uh, different uh, peptides, and one peptide that I really love, and I'm trying to figure out how's the best way we can use it so that it really, really can accomplish what, what, what it, I mean, if we can get it going, it's called PNC27. If we can figure out exactly how to use this, we would never even have to use low dose uh, and IPT again, okay? This literally attaches onto a cell, a cancer cell only. It only, H, H, HDM2 receptor, we only see on cancer cells. We don't see it on other cells, healthy cells, okay, for the most part. The PNC27 is a protein, uh, is, a, is a peptide, which is a, I think it's 28, 24, 26 amino acids long. It attaches to it, then bores a hole, kills it. Amazing. Also does, has work on the P53, upregulates P53. So yeah. this peptide is amazing. So, um, um, anyway, I don't know how that came in, but it came in good. I just wanted to mention it. I'm just, I think it's very good. And I really want to learn how to t work with it. Now, for those of you who are interested and you have access to peptides, um, PNC27, um, you can start at the lowest dose, would be one milligram. You would do it subcutaneously using a little insulin syringe into your belly five times a day, okay? Um, from what I'm reading, it looks like the best way would be intravenous continuous infusions, like infusion, maybe the whole eight hours of the day that you're, you know, getting infused, you know, and, uh, you know, so it'd be great if you were at home and you had a home nurse come over and hook you up, you had a port, you didn't, you had your hands free, you had a port you could put in and just drip in slowly to the PNC 27. Now, the real, I actually remember why I was bringing it up, because PNC 27, the only downside to PNC 27 is actually something that you might want, and that is you're killing the tumor too fast. If you're killing the tumor too quickly, <clears throat> it's spilling in, it spills, a, we wind up with uh, t what's called tumor necrosis syndrome, tumor lysis syndrome, where the tumor dies too quickly and it spills all that stuff we were just talking about, necrotic, into the blood, in the interstitial fluid and then the blood, and you get really sick. Um, so, but we can measure that. So we, you know, if you're doing PNC27, every, um, we five, every three to five, seven days, whatever it is, depending on your situation, we would check uh, LDH and uric acid. And they, if they start going up, we know that we're doing it too fast, we'd, just, we'd slow down a little bit. So there's a way of doing it, we're just trying to figure it out. Anyway, but, I, but, but for the minimum, you know, if you wanna know for sure you're killing some cancer cells, you can get PNC27, you can order it on Peptide Science, I don't know any other place to order it. There are other places, there are compounding pharmacies that allow uh, that that make it, but I don't know. You know, these things are really, uh, peptides are really simple to make, right? Because they're just stringing together amino acids with peptide bonds, which is a very simple type of chemical reaction. And not difficult, but I don't know, when you have a local compounding pharmacy, you never know the quality of scientists they have in there, uh, or if they're, if they're making it, or if they're getting it from, I just don't know. So the only place that I know where you're actually gonna get it is peptide science, which is for research. Research only. So anyway, um, and yeah, it comes in five milligrams little vials. You add in one cc of sterile water, bacteriostatic water, and it becomes clear, and then you take one fifth of it, right? One fifth, which on your insulin syringe, which is a hundred units, and a hundred units on an insulin syringe is equal to one cc. So therefore, <clears throat> if you're gonna divide that in five, you would take 20 units on an insulin syringe as a single injection, or 0 0.2 cc's, either way. <clears throat> And that's it, five times a day. But I don't think it's enough. So it might be that you wanna, you'll want you have to move up to 1.5 milligrams five times a day. And then maybe up to two milligrams five times a day. Now the problem is, of course, that these peptides are expensive. None of this stuff should be as expensive as it is. Nothing should be as expensive as it is. We are going to put together here in Thailand a clinic that is affordable. It's 
you know, there was a guy last week, you guys all remember that guy last week who had this very passionate <clears throat> thing about uh, do, you know, internal, uh, integrative doctors, integrative oncologists, all being expensive. It's true. It's ridiculous. Ridiculous. And these three-week specials down in Mexico, come on, three weeks we're going to go down to Mexico and, and eliminate turn over the body who that, that's, that, that's uh, been working at chronically fermenting cells to develop a successful method to, okay, okay, cancer. <clears throat> what we call, and I hate that word, so cancer. Let's, we can call it, it's um, chronically fermenting cells. They ferment as an adaptive response, okay? Okay, we got that. All right, now, from by the time because of double you know and then cells double so when we talk about cancers growing fast gr being aggressive etc it's just doubling time what what when is the doubling time doubling time means what one cell divides into two cells two cells divide into four cells four into, into eight eight into six and that's how it grows so it takes from one cell up to one about one gram where you can detect it uh, where you can first detect it, which we call stage one, takes about eight years. <clears throat> so now here you have this process that's been going on a minimum of eight years, but usually not, and then it's gone. Okay, so now you're going to go for three weeks somewhere, and three weeks they're going to turn that a process around. They're going to redo all... No, they're not. And they're going to give you stuff to take home. No, none of these guys are real. And I don't care who you are. You want, you know, Tony, you want to talk to me? Talk to me, Tony. It's just show me. Okay. Anyway, <clears throat> uh, it's not real. I've been working with cancer a long time, and I'm telling you, it's not real, and it's not easy. For people to change. That's the hardest part. And even when people change, they don't, the problem is our minds. We have, to, we have to have the greatest reverence and respect for the fact that our minds are unknowable. Never forget that 90% of our minds are subconscious. 90% subconscious. So we don't know what we're telling ourselves. Okay, that's, a, that's really a big deal. Why is it a big deal? Because 80% of our thoughts are pretty negative because you grow up, we all grow up with what? No, stop, don't. No, stop, don't. That's what we grow up with. All of us, every culture. Not every culture. There are some indigenous cultures who, who are, are pretty cool, right? They're pretty cool. They have like rites of passage. They're in, they're in touch with nature. They, you know, it's beautiful. Beautiful. There's some beautiful ones. Um, uh, but all the civilized, you know, civilization is like, uh, there's civilization and there's nature, you know? Okay. Who made nature? God. Who made civilization? Humans. What do humans produce? Garbage, trash, toxins. Yeah, we also produce jazz, rock and roll, and some other good stuff too. Yeah, I know. I'm not saying we humans are all negative. We do produce some good stuff. But you know what's really interesting about it? I was talking about someone yesterday. Um, um, jet art, real art, when it comes out of us, comes from pain, suffering. It's like you got to suffer. How are you going to play the blues if you ain't never been blue? You ain't going to play the blues if you ain't never been blue, you know? And blues became, became jazz, jazz became rock and roll, and, you know, all that stuff. So, anyway. I don't want to digress too far, because I can keep, you know, I, I go off into different universes and dimensions, but um, uh, I'm just telling you that nobody's got a special on cancer, Okay. And this, and the most, and the thing that's most important is very simple, please. And I know we have a lot of questions, and I will get to those specific questions. But I want you to get the whole. I want you to get the fundamentals. The fundamentals are this: the reason that 
what we call cancer, serous cells ferment. The reason that we become insulin resistant, the reason that our blood pressure goes up the, or down, and the reason that our knuckles get thick with uh, tissues from chronic inflammation, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The reason is, if you wanted to uh, just push, find out, just simplify it, is because we, because of civilization, because of society, because of uh, a culture, because of all of that stuff that we hold in the highest of esteem. And we are nationalities, and you know, I'm proud to be a Whatever it is, I don't care what it is. Don't be proud to be it. You're not it. It is not he or she or them or it that you belong to. Remember one of the lines out of Bob Dylan's songs? Okay, so you're not it. You're not a, you know, whatever it is. I don't want to say anything because I'll offend somebody somehow, somewhere. And, uh, and then they won't hear it. I don't care if I offend someone. That's okay. I mean, I offend people all the time without even trying. Um, but what I don't like about offending someone is then they're not listening and they're not going to hear it. And I'm not here to say that one thing is better than another. I'm just trying to reveal the truth that I understand. Okay? I, I, hypertension is a real illness. They're all real illnesses. In other words, you get, you're not well. You're imbalanced. You're all imbalanced. Yeah, your blood pressure goes up. You become, you become insulin resistant. You develop a tumor. These are real things. They're real things. But what I'm saying is why? Why don't we see that with wild animals 100 years ago? Not now, because the earth has been poisoned. But why don't we see that? with wild animals. Why don't we see uh, tum uh, lymphomas, tumors, cancer, um, heart attacks, stroke, arthritis, osteoporosis? Why don't we see that thing, that, that, with the wild animals who live according to instinct and which means they live according to their biology? We don't see that because that's not, they don't need, because there's nothing to adapt to. All of their biological needs are being met. When we have joined into and become part of a society, a civilization, a culture, we are now living in a specific unnatural way. And if we're going to live unnatural, we're going to result, our body's going to have to adapt. And those adaptations are going to be painful. Okay. So the ultimate, fundamental, easy way to understand how to heal is that you got to get out of civilization. But we can't do that. Right? We can't. We can't. We got families. Blah, 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 blah. So therefore, we change our lives to approximate living as closely as possible to the way we would if we were um, uh, living a natural life. I keep seeing your questions here. What about fish? Yeah. yeah. I, uh, yeah. Pescatarian diet. Okay. This, this comes up a lot. I don't want to stop. I don't want to avoid these guys' questions because they did it. Because you guys are asking questions, but you know what about fish? Yeah, okay, uh, eat, eat the fish. Uh, right? Uh, do you know what the oceans are? You know what's going on with the oceans, right? The oceans are so toxic that it would actually be safer to eat out of your toilet than to eat out of the ocean. They are extremely, extremely, extremely toxic. Okay, now. And what about the rivers and lakes in our war and our, our uh, toxic? Okay, so yeah, so if you could, if you could raise the fish in a certain way and then uh, kill them, I love the word fishing. Let's go fishing. It sounds so cute, right? The granddad and the grandson. They're gonna go fishing. Why don't they say what it is? Hey, hey, Sonny, want to go kill some fish? Uh, okay, let's go kill some fish, Dad or uh, Granddad. That's fun. I like to watch them. Squiggle and die. Wow. I'm so glad I never had a granddad to take me out killing fish. Anyway. Uh, yeah, if you want to eat dead fish, eat dead fish. You know, it's probably the safest of all of them. All right? If you can find it in non-toxic waters. Right? And stuff like that. Um, but what I recommend is this. Um, and, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, and you could probably, yeah, listen, you could... 
you could probably eat a lot of diets that I wouldn't really recommend and heal. But that you better be doing everything else. You better be going to bed early. You better be uh, uh, meditating eight, nine, ten times a day. What do I mean by meditating? And, and I believe me, I've had I just had a recent discussion with uh, a monk. So uh, I think it's very simple. I don't know why they complicate it. It's simple. You just stop thinking. And when you stop thinking, you know what's going to happen. Your natural killer cells are going to go up. Your your uh, activated T cells are going to go up, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. So, now, let's just talk. So we talked about apoptosis. We talked about um, uh, necrosis as where you kill the cell and it's not organized and it can't, it can't recycle things and you spill stuff in and you, get, and you have problems. That's necrosis. Okay. Now, when you see dead tissue, that's called necrotic which is the adjective for the state, the, 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 uh, the, the noun of necrosis. Uh, anyway, is it good? The question was, is it a good thing? Well, that's really what a lot of things, including chemo chemotherapy, attempts to do. It's to stimulate the extrinsic mechanisms of apoptosis. That is the goal. The goal is not necrosis. They don't want necrosis because that's going to cause you to get sick. I mean, you can die from tumor necrosis syndrome, you know, where too much tumor spills out. So, yeah, yeah. So, necrosis, uh, apoptosis of cancer cells is good, and, uh, it is, and it is food for the cell, yeah, because it, it, it's autophagy, yeah. Okay, now, uh, what is the next question? I had radioactive iodine five years ago. Can I do something to repair the DNA damage? Well, you know, the, re the repair of DNA is accomplished by very specific uh, systems. There's a couple systems, few, uh, several systems, and they involve enzymes. And some repair single-stranded, some repair double-stranded DNA damage. Single-stranded when it's when it's already divided, uh, and 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 a, a single-stranded, a copy of a single-stranded DNA is what we call RNA. But anyway, uh, anyway, there are different enzymes that do it. So the what what is what has become famously known as the BRCA enzyme is just a double strand one of one of the enzymes in a seven enzyme system to repair double-stranded DNA. Now, what we have to do to influence the body's ability to repair itself is get as healthy as possible. Because the, one of the fundamental mechanisms of life is repair. And I want to tell you really what that means, okay? Healing, heal, is the root of the word health. And so health is the ability to heal continuously. And what are you healing continuously? Well, the body is heir to not only the misfortunes of our bizarre... Uh, our bizarre passions and stuff like that, but on a physical level, it's heir to, um, uh, you know, radiation, it's heir to, not, it's, it, to, to chemicals in our food, our water, et cetera, and stuff, and stuff like that. So all of these things, so our body is always under assault, and it's under assault internally because we have these incredibly artificial um, stresses, right? And we broke my, oh, I broke my fingernail, I, my, <clears throat> my hair today, look at my hair. I mean, those are like, but you know, they you know they add up. So by the time you get to the office, if you broke a fingernail and you don't think your hair is looking good, and then you're late, and then nah, 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 nah. so all day long we're running on sympathetic overdrive. We're shutting down our immune systems. We're kicking it. You know, we're shutting down the blood flow to our healthy organs, to our to our internal organs. They're not getting the blood supply they need for healing, etc. Anyway, so that's what's happening. So cells are always being damaged, right? And we're eat and the foods we're eating are causing a condition called chronic inflammation. 
All right? So if you eat food that has been thermally denatured, thermally damaged, it does, and this is a proven fact, it's been proven scientifically uh, from the 1930s in Switzerland up through, uh, <clears throat> up, up presently, but I mean one of the greatest, I think, uh, evidence was in, in uh, was at uh, Washington University, and I think it was in 2004 uh, with Dr. Luigi Fontana, and um, Anyway, so the point is this: that eating a cook that's been a food that's been thermally denatured, thermally abused, thermally degenerated, as you like to call cooked food, um, um, uh, causes an underlying condition of chronic inflammation. Okay, so that causes damage. So it ha we have to continually repair that damage, and that's why health. The, the, the root of health is the word heal, because to be healthy is to be able to continually repair. Okay, and if you keep in mind, 36 with 21 zeros, that means 36 septillion cells are, uh, um, um, uh, chemical reactions are going on every second, and 37 million new cells are being recycled, and new ones made every second. Okay, you realize that these repair mechanisms you just met, you're asking me about with the DNA are very active, very important. 37 million per second. So what do we do to make sure that we can enhance that? We get healthy. How do we get healthy? We get healthy by living healthy. How do we live healthy? Well, we understand and imagine what it would be like if we were living in our natural habitat. And what our life would be like. And approximate that to the best of your ability in your current environment. And that takes a lot of study. But guess what? I've been doing, I've been studying that exact thing for a long time. So I pretty much summarized it if you want. Or you can spend the next 35 years studying it. But I pretty much summarized it. And, they, and here's the thing. You got, a lot of you are going to not agree with me. But that's okay. It doesn't matter. Um, it's just sad that you're not gonna take the benefit. Um, because I, listen, I gotta tell you something. I have no ulterior motive to tell you what I tell you. What would it be? Can you tell me, what, what, am I getting any kind of gain by this? Yeah, the, yeah. What, what kind of gain am I getting by doing these lives? The gain I'm getting is that, um, I mean, uh, on the from the from from the perspective that the uh, the critic would uh, take, uh, I'm getting uh, some consultations for which I earn money. Okay. All right, but that's not a, it's not a lot. It's not a lot. I mean, because I can't do that many. I'm only one person. So I mean, you know, that's why I want to have a center, and I want to and I want to take that center, and I want to use it as the prototype. And then I want to expand it out and make other ones and make uh, have doctors and nurses come and train there. And I really want to spread this around, right? Um, working individually with one-on-one, -on -one, I just will never affect enough people. All right? But anyway, my reason for telling you this is because I found it out and I want you to share, and I want to share it. So don't believe me. Don't argue with me. Whatever you want. But that would be a shame. A shame. Anyway, go to bed early. Move around all day long. Set your, figure out a way that every 90 minutes you're going to get up and move. All right? Turn off your mind a minimum of five times a day for two minutes. Believe me, you can't do it for 15 seconds. So if you get up to two minutes, that's pretty good. Then if you can go beyond that. Okay, you do that. Got to do that. Got to do that. And then uh, uh, eat real human food and don't eat it a lot of it. We don't need a lot to record, to take care of our nutritional requirements. We don't need a lot. And you got to go to bed early. It's, we call it early. It's just the time to, it's time to, time to go to bed. Sun went down. We're diurnal. I mean, it, it's not a big deal. It's not like, how did it, you know, I, I, what I wonder is how did things get controversial? Science. Well, is it scientifically validated? Yeah, it is. All right. Anyway, whatever. Uh, apoptosis, radioactive. So what you can do, and that's a good question. I understand it. 
you need to you want to enhance it so live healthy eat real should you also and your next question is should you do uh, oh that wasn't you I'm sorry okay but that will help you with your DNA damage okay because now all of your enzymes will be produced if you're not well nourished if you're not well slept blah, 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 it won't happen okay so it's very very important now uh, should uh, all cancer patients do HBOT. HBOT. There we go. It's another acronym. But anyway, it means hyperbaric oxygen therapy. And uh, how come I'm... I got too many things on. I'm, it's cold. Huh? Can you imagine being cold <clears throat> in Thailand? <sighs> That's like being hot on the North Pole. You know what I'm talking about? Anyway, here. <clears throat> Anyway, the idea of, of hyperbaric oxygen, and, and is it good for all tumors? Uh, it's good for everybody and all tumors. However, does it, is there evidence that it actually limit, can help kill all tumors? And there's evidence that it can either help to eliminate the tumor, or it does nothing that they can find. But it never, ever does damage. Now, what it does do is it increases your oxygen, the oxygen delivery to your tissues, and that's what tissues need for, cell, for life. Also, detox your kids from, from vaccines. I'll talk to you about that in a second. Um, now, um, so hypoxia, low oxygen, is the hallmark of cancer, okay? In, and and, and, and when, when you hear about when you do your scans and stuff and they talk about there's area of necrosis or the cent center, central part of the tumor is necrotic. That means it died. Why did it die? Because it lost its blood supply because the blood supply went, was, go, it was moving outward. And it, it, yeah. anyway, so that's necrosis. But hypoxia. Anyway, the hypoxia is the stimulation to uh, the HIF1 alpha pathway, which we've talked about in the past. That, right, that's for, for when you want to heal a wound. Oxygen goes down, HIF1 alpha gets turned on. That stimulates all the transcriptional factors. That stimulates angiogenesis, blood vessel growth. It stimulates tissue proliferation, all kinds of pathways. And all those pathways are cancer pathways. So hypoxia. So systemic hypoxia, which is why you never want your hemoglobin to be below 10. I don't care what they say, 8, seven, I don't, whatever they say, they don't know, they don't care. You don't want it below 11, actually. Ever, because you have systemic hypoxia. So you figure out a way. You can use erythropoietin. You can do other things. You got to do that. You got or you got to find a way to do it. Okay, but anyway, hypoxia. It's you know it's a critical hallmark of of, of tumors, solid tumors, and uh, it stimulates that thing. So 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 what happens with our blood? Our blood ninety percent of the oxygen is carried on red blood cells, on hemoglobin. Ten percent is in, available on, in the plasma, but usually the natural, the, the average person, only about two to three percent of the plasma has oxygen. The rest has got other stuff. Uh, so that's what the H bot does. The H bot can take that two to three percent of the plasma and increase it up to ten percent, and you can have be carrying a, a lot more oxygen that's not on the hemoglobin to be delivered to cells, and that's really really good. Cancer hates oxygen. But the but the thing but so so in the in the tumors that it does not seem to shrink the tumor. It's because you can't. It's not. It's still not enough oxygen being delivered to that tumor. That's all it means. That's all it means. However, it is delivering the oxygen to your other healthy cells, making them stronger, which includes your immune system, which will get stronger. So that's why I think everybody should do it. However, the um, you know um, the. Uh, The tumors, you know, for, well, so for example, the, the 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 tumors that we know that it works it works good in are like, um, you know, breast. Um, it it seems to do not much to colon. It seems to do not much to head and neck. Now, head and neck, when they talk about head and neck, and I wish they would be more specific because are they talking about nasal pharyngeal and? 
Thyroid? No, I don't think they're talking about thyroid. Okay. Even though the thyroid's in the neck. When they talk about head and neck, I think they really mean, mean what's also known as nasopharyngeal cancer, all right? which is cancer of the tongue, of the tonsil, things like that, of the uh, larynx, you know, places like that. Anyway, uh, but, but anyway, you know, and, and one of the fears and one of the arguments against hyperbaric oxygen might be that, well, it's going to stimulate new blood vessel growth, angiogenesis. Well, no, it's the opposite. Low oxygen stimulates new blood cells growth. And all the studies have shown that there's no evidence that uh, hyperbaric oxygen stimulates that. So if anyone tells you that. All right, so what's the next question? Uh, uh, yeah, by the way, what are the potential dangers of it? Well, you can pop your ear if you're... you're I mean, how, high, how high do you have to go? You should do high, it's 100% oxygen, and you go up to a minimum of 2.345 atmospheres. Daily, one hour a day, five days a week. It would be great. You can reverse stroke. You can reverse. Uh, you can re you can re reverse uh, eighty-five percent of the myocardial inji injury from the heart. You can reverse a lot of things. You, it's very good for. I did neurodegenerative conditions. It's really, really good for a lot of stuff. And in cancer, it's very good. It's good for overall health. It's good for the person who has no diagnosis, who's really healthy, and wants to be even healthier. Okay, so it's really good. Now, um, you know, just because of a lot of oxygen all at once, it can cause a temporary short-sightedness, a temporary myopia, but it's just temporary, just go away. It's not, you didn't damage anything, it's just a, And I mean, if you were up to three atmospheres, you could get, uh, the, 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 the pressure could collapse one of your lungs. Um, yeah, that would be a problem. But that usually don't go to three. Uh, and I've never seen it uh, over the, all the years I've been working at it. Okay, now, let's go to the next question. Um, what do I think of mistletoe treatment? I think it's fantastic, and I think it's you should do it. And you've got to find, if you're going to do mistletoe treatment, uh, you've got to find usually naturopaths. There are very rare MDs, but naturopaths in our country. In Europe, MDs know about it, uh, your Germany and stuff like that. But mistletoe is very good for the immune system, okay? And uh, <clears throat> you can get it IV, and you can do it subcutaneously, like every other day. Etc., and it stimulates the immune system. It kind of reminds me of when you do it subcutaneously, it kind of reminds me of uh, in the old days uh, with, with um, uh, uh, tuberculosis, TB, um, and they would give you um, a, B, uh, a BCG as a vaccine, yeah, uh, which is the same kind of thing. So, um, and it's really good. You can give it IV and you can give it subcutaneously. And it's good to stimulate the immune system. It can give you a fever. Fevers are good. Fevers stimulate, wake up the immune system. And the fever takes you from a chronic inflammatory condition to an acute inflammatory condition. And an acute inflammatory condition kills cancer, kills arthritis, kills the chronic, supports all these things. Okay, and they have special names, Th1, M1, and Th2, and M2, and all that sort of thing. But basically, it's what I just said. Okay, what is the difference between... What is the difference between a hot tumor and a cold tumor? It's a good question, okay? So the tumors that are considered hot are like melanoma, bladder, bladder uh, kidney, head, and neck, and non-small lung cancer. Now, those are basically considered hot, right? And the ones that are considered to be cold are... Um, uh, the glioblastomas, ovarian, prostate, and pancreatic. They're, okay, and triple negative breast cancer. They're considered to be cold. So what does that mean? That means, a hot tumor means that the, the, the basically the tumor has been surrounded by T cells, and these T cells are ready to kill. Okay? And a cold tumor means it did, they didn't. They didn't get surrounded. That's all it means. Now, why do they even ask these questions? Why did we get the term hot and cold tumor? Because it has to do with these checkpoint inhibitors. The checkpoint inhibitors turn off a mechanism that would stop the T cells from killing the tumor. So in other words, the T cells are there and the checkpoint uh, gets blocked and they don't. Uh, and, and I'm not gonna go into the mechanism of how that happens, but it, it gets blocked and now they can't kill the tumor, okay? So the checkpoint inhibitor will take off that block and then it kills the tumor. 
But if you got a cold tumor, it doesn't work because there's nothing to turn off. However, what's been found out is that ivermectin can turn a cold tumor into a hot tumor. All right? So therefore, then you could use your checkpoint inhibitors and they will work. All right? Very, very important. Okay. Um, and uh, the other thing that I would recommend to turn a cold tumor into a hot tumor, and also I would recommend for anybody with cancer, is what they call minor autohemo ozone therapy. Not the major. The major autohemo um, um, ozone therapy is when they take your blood out, they ozonate it, they move it around like this, and then you get it back infused into you, or you use a 10-pass, or you use an EBO. All of that is, is different. That's ozonating the entire blood. But minor autohemo ozone therapy is where you take out perhaps five cc's of blood from the for your vein into a let's say a, a 20 cc syringe and you add in five cc's of ozone so now you got ozone and red blood and you shake it vigorously so that you break up all the cells and oxidize them so when you break up all of the cancer cells into that they happen to be in your blood and you break them all up now you're exposing parts of the cancer cell that were never exposed because the cancer cell used to be kind of round or whatever it was, but it had edges. It had, it had a surface. That surface gets broken apart and now inside little uh, uh, parts of the inside of the cell are now exposed. It's just all there. Now you give that combination of you just broke up as an injection into your butt or into your arm. Uh, and what happens? That's an, that's a trauma. So your white blood cells, cells show up to the trauma to take care of it. And they run into all these cells. And they see all these different fragmented cancer cells and they develop an immune response. So now your immune response is greater than it would be if the cells were not broken up. So you And plus it's also got the normal edges of the cancer cell as well. So basically it's an immune enhancer. And, then that, and that's good for cold tumors, but it's good for cancer. So what we do at our center is twice a week. Very good. Okay. All right. My aunt died of 67 of breast cancer. Am I likely to get it too? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Cancer is not hereditary. If you have BRCA, you could have gotten it from a parent who had it but didn't know they had it and didn't have any problems. And you can have BRCA and this person can have BRCA and this person gets a cancer and this person doesn't. It all has to do with your current lifestyle. It's all with your current lifestyle. So you're not likely to get it at all. Your aunt died of breast cancer at 67. But I don't know more about your, your, your aunt and how she lived and all that kind of thing. But what, who, what your name, but, but you, what you should do, you should live healthy, be healthy, and uh, go, what, go to bed early, eat human food, or same way. I would greatly appreciate hearing your thoughts on the Budwig protocol. Thank you. I think it's great because it's oil. It's it's giving us it's giving us. Uh, but I don't. Th but I think it's better to get these oils in their natural form rather than the oil, which is a processed, a process, a, pro a pr processed. It's a processed food. Use oil only for flavor, like olive oil on salads and things like that. You can put some flax oil if you're. But but eat the flax seeds. Blend up. I mean, grind up the flax seeds and make a smoothie. Grind up the chia, I mean, maybe you can grind up half and the other half don't grind because you need them to be full so that they can become a nice, delicious porridge. They need to be mucilaginous like that, okay? So uh, so maybe take nine tablespoons, grind up three, and, and don't grind up six. And then put, put in some fresh nut milk, okay? All right. Uh, so what the Budwig was doing was trying to make sure you got that. And they were doing cottage cheese and flax soy oil. Now the not not the not the cottage cheese. The problem I have with it is it still has casein, which is a, a, a protein that stimulates cancer growth. So that was the only thing I wouldn't have done. But uh, other than that, it was a fantastic, important idea. Uh, is bone broth healthy in the diet? Well, most people, most naturopaths are going to tell you yes, and I'm going to tell you no. 
We don't need to eat bone broth. We don't need to eat bones. We don't need to eat ligaments. We don't need to eat the knuckles. We don't need to eat eyeballs. We don't need to eat eyelids. We don't need to eat scrotums. We don't need to eat uh, labia. Well, uh, we don't need to eat... Uh, eh. In other words, we don't need to eat animals to be healthy. And we certainly don't need to make a bone marrow broth. Uh, bone broth. And it became popular. It's got some good nutrients in it, but you can get it all in other ways without killing an animal and boiling its bones. And they usually use what? Chicken bones? Believe me, I, I, I can tell you a sad, a sad story about it. I, I knew a doctor who, uh, wh uh, when I met him, he, was, he had cancer, lung cancer. And he came to me and we worked with him and he got the cancer was gone. He loved it so much that what we were doing that he started working with me, became my, you know, my, the other doctor in my clinic. And then, and then eventually when I left New York, he stayed there. And he was doing fine all these years. He was eating raw and all that. And then he started back to eating his other food. And then the last thing I heard, he was eating bone broth. And then the next thing I heard is he died. Not that the bone broth didn't kill him, I'm just saying because he stopped eating the other way. How to get rid of dead cancer cells? You can't. Your body will. Your body will. Make sure you have good bowel movements. Make sure, make sure you're urinating a lot. Make sure you're eating healthy food. Everything, and your body will get rid of it. You don't have to worry about it. Pleural mesothelioma, I don't know how I got it, no symptoms for three years. Wow. Wow. Anyway, well anyway, you you get the same things. You need to you need to really live healthy, you need to clean out really nicely. Um, as we all know, mesothelioma is plural, you know, in the lungs uh, are, are have been associated with uh, uh, asbestos and smoking. And basically the mesothelioma is it's the lining of the lung gets uh, becomes uh, uh, starts to ferment and becomes chronically fermenting cells. Uh, but anyway, you, it, it, but remember, it's just location. You, we treat it the same way. You would need the, you know, the high dose vitamin C, you would need all the things that we would do, colon cleansing, lymphatic work, uh, you know, you can even be uh, doing some nebulizing of uh, uh, colloidal silver and the best colloidal silver to nebulize is Argentin 23 from Natural Immunogenics. The best, the best, safest best. Don't make it in your garage. All right. Uh, what, what could it be from time to time? I have a feeling like if the blood was not running quickly. Well, I'm not sure what that feeling is, but uh, if the blood was not running quickly, you would have, uh, you'd be very tired and cold. Um, but anyway, so the thing is, you're probably dehydrated because most of us are, so drink, 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 drink. Drink uh, at least two liters of fresh juice a day and then another two liters of water and you'll be fine. And, and, if, and the food, remember, if you eat food that's not cooked, you don't get thirsty. Did you ever get thirsty eating a salad? Did you ever get thirsty eating fruit? Did you ever get thirsty eating anything that's not cooked? No. Why? Because if it's not cooked, it still has the water in it. And you don't get dehydrated. How many chelation sessions needed post-chemo and scans? Well, uh, depending on the chemo, if you had, plat, uh, you know, cisplatin, oxaloplatin, carboplatin, uh, any of the platins, you're going to have platin, and that's what, they, that, that's what uh, chelation will get. But other, other than that, chelation doesn't, it only gets metals. So if there was a metal in there. And uh, always the, the magical number for chelations is disodium EDTA is 40 once a week. I have high platelets, Okay. I don't know how high they are, but they get high if you if you have acute inflammation. Uh, if they're really, really high, like above 900,000, like up to a million, then you've got a problem. You might have something what they call myelodysplastic syndrome, uh, which is your, your bone marrow is making too many platelets, but I'm not sure if that's what you have. 
you probably just have, it's a reactive thing, because the platelets go up under certain situations. But they're not dangerous until around a million in terms of blo causing your, uh, you to get uh, strokes and things like that. Iron infusion value for alternative for vegans. Well, you get, uh, vegans get plenty of iron in all the vegetables and plants. Why wouldn't a vegan be able to absorb it if they didn't have enough hydrochloric acid in their stomachs? That's the only reason. Otherwise, we absorb it. Okay, we turn the ferric into ferrous and it gets absorbed in the duodenum and that's what happens. Okay, so that's the alternative for iron infusion. You don't need it. Just do, make sure you have enough acid. Take hydrochloric acid 10 minutes before you eat. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, that's how it happens. Once Western medicine gets you to NED status, what do you recommend as next step? Run, get away from them, get away from them. Never see them again, you don't need them. That's a number one, number, one, number two, number three, number four, number five. Don't ever go back there again, okay? No, no evidence of NED, no evidence of disease means they have shrunk the primary tumor and they have stimulated the growth of your stem cells, they've stimulated the growth of multiple metastases. Now I'm not meaning to scare you because that's not hard to get rid of. I'm just, I just want you to be informed that that's, what's, that's what happens. And then they, and they, they, they love that term, NED. Don't use their acronyms, don't use their terms, don't play their, ball, their, their video game. They made the video game, they're gonna win it, okay? So here's what you do. What do you do? You get real healthy. Ivermectin is gonna stop the spread of, of cancer stem cells. Vitamin C is gonna stop the spread of cancer stem cells. Curcumin is gonna stop the spread of, of cancer stem cells. Doxycycline is gonna stop the spread of cancer stem cells. Vitamin D is gonna stop the, cell, the spread of cancer stem cells. You do all these things and you eat healthy and you live healthy and you do all that sort of thing. And I would also get intravenous vitamin C like twice a week. For you, if you can for a while, 50 grams. Not a lot, you have no big deal, but you're drinking vitamin C all day, seven to seven, right? We're all, we all drink seven to seven. We sip seven to seven, the three S's, sip seven to seven, right? I have 10 grams of powdered sodium ascorbate. I just take a sip like that, seven to seven. And you have enough. Then when you sit down and get your 50 gram IV, it goes right up to becoming therapeutic, okay? So congratulations from getting away from the, from the uh, uh, con uh, allopathic conventional medical world and now go and take care of your health. Do a good cleanse, you need a good cleanse. You need to clean out your colon, you need to drink just vegetable juices for three weeks, four weeks, just drink three, four, five quarts a day. Whatever you can drink, drink until you're peeing out of all ends. Then, and you're doing all that, and you're changing completely, all right? You'll lose weight, don't worry about it. So what? You can gain it back. It's not hard to gain back, back weight. Uh, best way to wake up your immune system, please, please advise. Best way to wake up your immune system um, is um, the number, easiest colonic. Colon hydrotherapy, immediately. You free up by like 60%. The other thing is eating healthy, of course. Um, and you gotta get a, get a fever or, um, uh, if you can't get a fever, then you can use IL-2 and you can use, and you gotta use a TA-1 to help make sure you have a lot of T cells, thymus and alpha-1, which is a peptide, um, IL-2, or whole body hyperthermia done the right way for at least four hours, six hours, or Coley's toxin to give you a fever. Those are ways of waking up your immune system. You've got to get it out of a, a chronic TH2 to a acute TH1. Is there another medication that is comparable to ivermectin or works well? Uh, the ivermectin, well, th th there's a lot of things that, there's a lot of medications that do many similar things that ivermectin does. Does but ivermectin is kind of special and does things that other ones don't. So you can get it. It does exist. It is in the world. Um, you gotta find a place that you can get it from. Um, 
but yeah, you can use fenbendazole, you can use uh, niclosamide, you can use, uh, there's a lot of them that, that do a lot of the similar things. Is it better to buy fresh amoeba berries, not labeled organic, or organic amoeba powder? That's a good question. If the powder was prepared cold, not hot, nothing was destroyed, if it's still alive, then it's good, yeah. Uh, and if it's not labeled organic, then you could soak it in ozonated water, you could soak it in uh, uh, six to seven, six to nine percent hydrogen peroxide, diluted, diluted in water, not pure. Um, but, uh, you still might not get it, get it all, but that that's a really good way of neutralizing the hydrocarbons, um, pesticides, and stuff like that. Uh, but if the amla powder is real, if it was prepared cold and everything's still alive, the enzymes are still alive, then that would be okay. What's really helpful during menopause? Well, during menopause, you know, menopause is basically. <clears throat> Estrogen and progesterone withdrawal. It's basically, it, it, if you get like a, 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 an imbalance of these female hormones. Um, and the results of, a, of, of menopause, uh, a lot of people say, well, I've got, I went through it, I'm fine. And yeah, you don't, you're not getting the hot flashes, but you probably have osteoporosis. Uh, you could have, uh, most likely you're gonna have uh, vaginal dryness and um, yeah loss of libido, um, things like that. But if, you know, the, the, the vaginal dryness can be a problem because it can become so um, atrophic that it bleeds easily. Just simple wiping makes it bleed. It can be painful. Intercourse is impossible. And, uh, but even just walking, I've, I've, I've had people tell me that just walking, they can feel it and it hurts or the wind or the air. Imagine that. So n normally things you wouldn't be aware of. So you really want to fix that. And you can fix that with estriol cream. 0.03% estriol cream. Estriol cream. And you insert it nightly into your vagina and you lie down flat at night and you go to sleep. You do that for two weeks and then twice a week. Three times a week, whatever, to maintain it. And you also get on biological hormones, biologically identical hormones. You take vitamin D because you don't want to, because you want to make sure you're absorbing calcium. You don't need to take calcium. You're getting it from plants because you're eating healthy. Um, and so I get biologically identical hormones. So let's see here. Are we doing good with time? I'll get my time. Is there anything that can help boost your thymus gland after the age of 60? Uh, what you can do is use thymus and alpha one, which is the peptide. Yeah, that's what you can do. Thymus and alpha one. Okay, one point six milligrams subcutaneously in your belly, daily for two weeks and then twice a week. Do that. That will do it. Here's someone saying my both knees hurt so much. I'm taking ten milligrams of oxygen. Any advice? not to have pain. Don't take the tamoxifen. You can use other things. You can use a lot of soy. You can use flax. You can use these things, which will give you the same, give you the same benefit and more than tamoxifen did, without a problem. That's what I would advise. But in terms of pain, if you've got pain in your knees, it's probably inflammatory. So anti-inflammatories like ibuprofen uh, would help. Um, curcumin, uh, curcumin, ginger, boswellia, all of those herbs help as anti-inflammatories, but you got to take a lot. And I don't know if they work as well as, uh, I, 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 I don't know if they work as well as the ibuprofen. Some people claim they do. But you don't need to be taking it, that's the thing. You can do other things. Here's the question. No fruit? Yeah. Good question. I don't know the answer. I would say yes, you can have fruit. For sure, you can have the low glycemic fruits like berries, green apples, uh, some oranges, uh, green kiwis. I said that. Yeah. Uh, lemons, but who eats lemons? Um, what else? 
Anyway, those are the non those are low glycemic, but you can even eat the glycemic ones, uh, I think. Now, fructose is picked up by the GLUT5 receptor on cancer cells. It does feed the cancer cell, but it also feeds the healthy cell. You know, but it's not like glucose, so it doesn't preferentially feed the cancer cell, so it's kind of cool. Um, anyway, so that, that would be, a minimum you can have is the low glycemic, and some people eat fruit anyway. But we saw that people that ate a lot of fruit, uh, that they they had more problems. So, and then other people have said they've eaten just fruit and they've done fine. So, no meat. Yeah. Well, what you're calling meat? You're, you're you, I think you're referring to the muscles of of, uh, of dead animals. All right. And the muscles of dead animals are really really good for um, uh, dogs, rats, raccoons. But they're not too good for us because we have a, very, we have a 10 meter, uh, which is 30 feet uh, intestines. And by the time those, that, that dead, that piece of corpse gets to the bottom of the anus, it has turned, it has become putrefied and is producing toxins. Uh, and you're not getting any benefit that you wouldn't get otherwise. You're not getting more protein. Broccoli has more protein. Spinach has more protein. So, I mean the same amount. Yeah, more. Twice. Twice as much. So, yeah. Yeah, no. Get away. Get, that, that, I'm just telling you. You know, I, I, you know, I don't. Uh, plus, depending on your ethics, on your morality. You know, if I can pass my life, pass my way, my 120 years on the planet in this particular incarnation, if I can pass that way, without having harmed, damaged, sentient beings, I would be happy about that. And therefore, I would like, I would prefer that it, whatever winds up on my dinner plate got there non-violently. That would make me, I'd feel better. I'd feel better. Not everybody cares. There are, are uh, I've eaten, in fact, I've come to think that there are two, uh, uh, spiritually, there are two species of people. Some people are loath to, to harm. They can't harm anything. And other people enjoy it. It's really weird. I, and I've seen, you know, they like to fight. They like to hurt. I just, I can't watch it. I can't imagine it. So it's really hard. Um, and some people are proud of hunting. And they think, you know, I don't understand it, and uh, but that's why I think it's like spiritually two species of people. But anyway, so if morally you're okay with uh, somebody murdering an animal and you eating their carcass, if you're morally okay with that, for your pleasure. And why do I say that? Because it's for your pleasure, it's not for your health. So murder for pleasure. Hmm. 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 Anyway, some people that doesn't bother. I need help with Hodgkin's lymphoma to heal it naturally without chemo. Please give me advice. Well, here's the problem with uh, Hodgkin's lymphoma. I mean, with uh, uh, healing cancer naturally, whether it's Hodgkin's lymphoma or non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, which is all that is is a is a is when they look under the microscope, do they see Reed Sternberg cells or not? It's an artificial distinction. But anyway, um, and then any other chronically fermenting cell that's called a cancer anywhere in the body. Doing it naturally means you've got to do it 100%, and that means that turning off the mind five, six, seven times a day, turning it off, it's got to be a priority. And living exactly healthy, that's what you can do. That's what you can do. Go to bed early. Eat only plants. You know, leaves, stems, fruit, seeds, nuts. Eat all that. Have a, at least 18 hours between last meal and first meal, so that your insulin receptors go down, and you, you know your, your that whole dynamic improves. Uh, make sure your your hormones are balanced. 
Um, stop lying in any of your relationships. Have a healthy have healthy relationships. Um, uh, move around all day. Somehow move around all day. Um, enjoy sex. Um, I'm probably missing something, but that's a good way to do it. Any suggestions for a 25-year-old female with hyranditis supportiva? I eat an ancestral anti-inflammatory diet, get a daily sweat in, and use a sauna. Well, a couple of comments for that. First of all, that condition it can occur in the armpits, or it can occur in the pubic area. And what it is, is little pustules, like they're little uh, hard white pustules that are painful. And, um, uh, and they're chronic, and they're chronic. What's very interesting is that, and they say that it's related to both uh, androgens, male hormones, and um, and bacterial infections. Well, uh, in my experience with it, it ha is usually a staphylococcus infection. Any pustule is usually what they call a staphylococcus, which is different than streptococcus and uh, staphylococcus. So um, you got to find, you know, one of the ways is finding out which uh, particular, because uh, that's a real problem. It's a real problem. It doesn't go away. You'll have it for years and years and years and years. And this is one of the times you've got to use antibiotics. And I would recommend, uh, you know, trying, you know, there there's several antibiotics that are specifically for staph. You need to get a sample of it, have a dermatologist pull out some of it, send it to the lab and find out what specific antibiotic is going to kill it and take it a lot, a lot of it. And it'll go away. It's usually staph. Now, check your hormones. Make sure your androgens are not out of balance and high because androgens, which are, you know, testosterone, androstene, dione, those kinds of things, they do. And they also can be responsible for what we call acne and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, I mean, even Bactrim. Bactrim often gets uh, uh, resistant staph, and Bactrim is easy to find. It's also called Septra, I don't know what's it called. Anyway, it's trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole. It's an old antibiotic, antibiotic yeah. Yeah, and then uh, you can uh, um, use also uh, like 6% hydrogen peroxide if it's in your armpits. If it's uh, in your pubic hair, that might be different. And shaving your pubic hair doesn't help. By the way, I don't know, I guess you, uh, it depends on your generation, but shaving, you know, you shave pubic hair, um, for some reason it became fashionable, and I'm not sure how that happened. I'm not sure how looking like a child became fashionable. My sense about shaving pubic hair is that it's probably part of those guys, you know, that are doing all the bad stuff to the earth, trying to get people to be more... Uh, we're trying to normalize uh, pedophilia. So I kind of think of, I, I don't know, I, I, I guess I'm old school, right? I grew up and uh, one of the things that we noticed is that when you became a teenager, uh, you had pubic hair and like that distinguished adults from children. And usually we don't want children, we don't want adults to be attracted to children sexually, right? And yeah, and we shave our pubic hair. So it, what? I mean, I don't understand that. But anyway... I just want you to know that God, remember God, did not make any mistakes, is not making any mistakes. So if it's there, there's a reason. Find out the reason, especially for females. It really performs a, perfect, a, a protective function. Anyway, but so, but even but the thing with with with, with your condition, the high ride. Hyrandentitis, hyra, dentitis. Yeah, it's the most one of the most 
Hydrodentitis. One of the most stupidest words. I can't believe it. Uh, super ta, super tiba. And, they, and, and, and they call it a diagnosis. All it is is little pustules. In the armpits and or groin. Okay. But you can sh- as I said, you can shave the armpits, you can shave the pubic hair, and you're still not going to eliminate them. Okay. Um, and uh, so you balance your hormones. Make sure you've got balanced hormones. You don't have uh, too many androgens. And that you're balanced. And use biologically identical hormones. And find the antibiotic that's going to kill staph. Because these are staph. That's, what's, that's what they are. They're full of staph, staphylococcal infection. Oh, by the way, you said you eat an ancestral anti-inflammatory diet. You mean your ancestral? Uh, like, are you from Italy? Are you from Germany? Are you from Africa? Are you from Thailand? Where are you from? Australian? Those ancestors? What they ate? Or are you talking about the misunderstanding of prehistory? that has been propagated upon the human race by the same people that brought you COVID, by the same people that brought you World War I, II, I and II, Korean, French Revolution, Civil War, the the same people. They've been working with us for a long time. Anyway, they've got us believing that we once were monkeys, became apes, and then from apes we became human. And we crawled out of the caves. We came out of the caves. And so what would we do? This is back in the Paleolithic day. What would we do? We came, we just got out of the cave. What are we going to do? Oh, I got it. Let's invent language. Okay, so we're going to invent Sanskrit and the Chinese language. Okay, because those will be the pretty good foundations, I think, for... Now, these are complex grammatical languages that scholars are studying today. But, ah, no, Paleolithic guys started it, right? Then they wanted something to do, so they built the pyramids. Now, the pyramids cannot be duplicated today, but these guys from the Paleolithic time who were eating animals, right? Because that's what the Paleolithic diet is, right? It's animals. I mean, are dead animals, of course. Corpse, the corpse, pa- Paleolithic, Post, you know, just came out of the cave guy or still partly in the cave. Oh, agriculture came, oh, oh. Built the pyramids. So that's what they want us to believe. I think, but let's say you're religious. Let's say you're Jewish, Muslim, or Christian, then you look at the Bible. Or if you're Hindu, Buddhist, it all points to eating plants. Oh no, I'm Jewish and I'm supposed to eat um, uh, kosher. I'm Muslim, I'm supposed to eat halal. Hmm. I'm Christian, I can eat anything except on Fridays. Gotta have fish on Fridays. Um, and then I fast during Lent. Um, anyway, so well, yeah, yeah. I agree with all of you on that. However, do you go back to the first book that you guys ever, uh, that that's, is the foundation of your religion? Now, I know the Quran is powerful for Muslims, and I, I know that. And I think it supersedes the Pentateuch, the five books of Moses, I think. Or it's at least considered equal, because Muhammad really was talking about all the same things. Anyway, in the first book, uh, what the Christians call Genesis 1, verse 29, it's pretty clear it's not ambiguous at all of what we should eat. And then plan B. Plan B because we were just acting like hyenas and dogs and God said, well, you might as well eat like hyenas and dogs, but first I'm going to wipe out the world. So he brought a big flood After the flood, he told Noah, okay, you eat those corpses. But even according to that story, the average lifespan of 912 went down to 120 after the flood. And then what was different? Ah, that's right, they were eating dead animals. Hmm. 
Anyway, and then we wound up at the Paleolithic somehow. I don't know how I got there from... Uh, somehow. No, uh, uh, anyway. You know, it, it, so that's the uh, that, that's that, that religion. But the Hindus and the Buddhists, you know, like, uh, so a Buddhist uh, won't eat a cow, but they'll eat a pig. And a Hindu won't eat a pig but the Lita cow. So, I'm confused by them all. Eh, so, uh, I'm not commenting on re religions, I'm commenting on cultures, and I, and I, I wish I understood them. Uh, I wish I understood why uh, I, why it's okay. It's kind of like, well, you can eat animals, but I love my cat. I love my dog. What if you got people that like to eat dogs? That's disgusting. They like to eat dogs. <laughs> That's disgusting. Give me a steak. And I want some, throw some chicken nuggets, fingers, in there. All right? Oh, my sweet little... I don't know what I would do without you. Mmm. Great steak. Great steak. It, it, but I guess I'll never understand and I'm going to have to accept that I'll never understand that but anyway let me just tell you that your anti-inflammatory diet is a raw food diet and you can prove that to yourselves by looking up Luigi Fontana I think it was 2004 it was a published study looking at people eating raw food versus people eating regular food one of the findings he found was that people that ate, ate raw food had virtually undetectable CRPs. C-reactive proteins means they did not have any evidence of inflammation. All right, that's what he found. That's what he found. That's what he found. That's what he found. 1930, Dr. Paul Luak did a study of people eating raw, uh, raw food versus people eating cooked food. Raw food had normal CBCs, normal white blood cell count. The people that ate um, the cooked food had uh, leukocytosis, which is an elevation of white count. I don't know. I mean, I'm just telling you. Yeah, and the Paleolithic diet, anti-inflammatory diet. Uh, yeah, I, I think that must be what you mean. And you get a good sweat. That's beautiful. And you're a 25 year old female. Yeah, so that's a bummer. And especially if it's in, in your uh, pelvic area, pubic area, that's a real bummer. And it's going to be painful. So please, get a hold of that. Uh, you got to get, you know, it's going to be painful, but you got to get a dermatologist who's going to take out some of that pus, send it to the lab, find out what exactly. You might find out that whatever antibiotics you were taking them before didn't, you know, they'd go away and come back, go away and come back. But you need something that's going to, that'll, it'll help, it'll help, it'll help. And sometimes, listen to this. Sometimes it's all being supported because we're, we're, we have parasites. So you've got to get rid of the parasites, too. You've got to do a cleanse. You've got to clean out your colon. You've got, to, you've got to do some lymphatic work. You've got to do all of the healthy things. It's not just don't focus on that one area in your body. Well, whatever you have, whatever condition, you've got to clean out everything. So I would do a three-week juice feast. A three-week juice feast. Do some a colon hydrotherapy twice the first week and then once every the other two weeks. Do lymphatic work. Do exercise. Go to bed early. Wait, this was recommended by my integrative doctor for improvement with methylation. It is called Detoxification Factors from Integrative Therapeutics. It has a lot of good stuff in it. I'm concerned about the glutamine and methionine. I don't want to feed chronically fermenting cells. What do you think? I'm over a year out from ER... PR positive, HER2 negative. Thank you. Okay, so yeah, I'll go, I got to look. I'm sorry, I didn't. Look, uh, I didn't look that up. But if it's got glutamine and methionine, here's the thing. Glutamine is the primary fuel source for your T uh, for your T cells for your lymphocytes. So you need that. It's important. It's the primary fuel source for your for your small intestines, which you need for digestion. Methionine is very important as well, uh, and that's gonna you know, and that's kind of what. You know, uh, now, a vegetarian diet keeps the methionine low, not high. Um, but remember, chronically fermenting cells result from an imbalance 
They don't result from these specific things like estrogen doesn't cause it, testosterone doesn't cause it, glutamine doesn't cause it, methionine doesn't, they don't cause it. There are factors that we think may be majorly causative when they're only part of a myriad of things that are happening. But you can't say that thing, one thing is good and one thing is bad. Right? I mean, unless you're talking about arsenic or something. But, for example, glucose feeds cancer, but we can't do without it. It also gives us the two-carbon group that becomes uh, fats. That's how we make fats, either from glutamine or glucose, but usually glucose. We make fats, make our fats. And we also use the omega-3s to make uh, derivative fats. But in other words, cholesterol we need, which we need, we make from glucose. Um, you can't do without glucose. As a matter of fact, we have a process called gluconeogenesis. So if we're running too low, our, our liver converts other kinds of uh, nutrients into glucose. So I've got someone on a 41-day water fast and their, their blood glucose is still 60, I 70. Wow. Where is it coming from? It's being made. Or it's eating up dead tissues, cancers. So, uh, it's really, no one will ever understand physiology and biochemistry. No one. 36 septillion chemical reactions going on at once, all feeding into each other perfectly so that you are a coherent individual. Well, unless you're president, but other than that, most people are coherent. Um, and how, oh, well, so that's pretty amazing. Who's running the show? That's my question. Who is running the show? Not God. No, 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 not God. There is no God. It's black matter and black energy. Do you guys know that? I mean, dark energy, dark matter. Do you know about that? This is what science, they, they, they hate the word God. So science calls it dark energy and dark matter. Check it out. It's... I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I've never... I, this definitely Kali Yuga. I'm telling you, we are in Kali Yuga. Uh, is 460 Fahrenheit and high? Yes. Yes. It's high. Can you recommend a good cookbook for patient, cancer patients? I find they normally have too many ingredients and are difficult to make. Well, I don't know about cookbooks, but I do know about um, raw food preparation books, which is what I would recommend. Uh, there are many out there now, really good. We put one, I mean, we put one together. I think I showed it last week. But anyway, it's called Stop Making Cancer. It's a raw food It's a raw food cookbook. Uh, they call them cookbooks by mistake. It's a preparation book. But anyway. Oh, anyway. anyway, there's lasagnas and stuff. It's delicious, delicious, delicious. Too many ingredients. There's not a lot of ingredients. It's like easy to make. Where's the lasagna? The lasagnas are crazy delicious. I really, it's like as good as lasagna, normal lasagna. Well, it's not the same because it's not a noodle. But here, check this out. Check this out. This, yeah, veggie wrap. And check this out. This pizza. I mean, amazing taste. Amazing taste. I mean, in other words, you don't have to do without the stuff that you were. And then here you go, some little manacotti. Not really manacotti, but you know. Here's a tostado. Anyway, there's all kinds of food. I mean, uh, I can't find a lasagna, but the lasagna is crazy. The taco's crazy. Anyway, yeah, they're out there. And that, uh, Stop Making Cancer, a raw vegan recipe book. Uh, and there are other ones on uh, that, uh, that I have on my shelf and stuff like that. Um, there's a lot out there. So we're talking about the food that someone should eat if, they're having, if they uh, have cancer or if they don't know they have cancer. Oh, okay, so this is a question from Kylie. 
Kylie, who uh, we met, I guess, when she, at when I was at Life Co. I'm 50 now. Yay! So you got the first 50 years. Remember, everybody, everybody, especially TikTok people, but everybody, listen to this. This is just true. The first 50 years of life are free. You can pretty much do anything you want. Not everybody, but the second 50 you have to earn. And it ain't easy, if, especially if you were living those first 50 years like you didn't know that certain things were not compatible with health or if you never thought about health. But earning the next 50 is not easy. So you made it to 50, good for you. Do I know of a, of a I'm not lo, no longer with Life Go, I haven't been with Life Go since the beginning of the great hoax of 2020. Uh, I haven't been with Life Co. Um, and um, can I recommend a good detox center anywhere? The problem with most of them is that they're, they cater to the spa mentality of people where, you know, well, I don't have to do that. I mean, um, well, today you can do the, this and this and this, you know. Well, I don't think I'll do that today. I think I'm going to do this today. Blah, 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 blah. Eh, and tonight I'm going to have some wine with my uh, dinner. Okay, look, at, when you're doing a detox, you're doing a detox. When you're not doing a detox, you're not doing a detox. If you're going to do a detox, be strict. Do it like that. And I, I don't know of any place that really does that and forces it. I mean, not, not forces, but, but doesn't have the other stuff around. I don't know of any. I am building a center right now with some beautiful, wonderful people that I know. Um, and, uh, well, they're doing it. I'm just sitting here. Um, and uh, they're doing all the work. But they're going to do it uh, the right way for, the way, for the way I want it. And that will be a center. So, six months. Six months. Six months. Uh, thank you so much. What was your name? Ludmila. Ludmila. Thank you very much. I sincerely appreciate that. Wow, recurrence of mumps in the same side twice in three months. All right, well. De time to detox. If you're talking about an, an adult or a child or whatever, cleanse. Time to cleanse, clean out the colon, lymphatics, drink a ton of juice, cleanse, maybe do five days water, maybe do like, a, if you're an adult, do two weeks juice, one week water, two weeks juice. Do that, do that, just do it, do it, clean out, no, 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 gotta do that, gotta do that. The other thing is UBI, <clears throat> a good UBI machine, <clears throat> ozone helps, <clears throat> vitamin C helps, all those things are very, very good for that as well, okay? But the number one is cleaning out that body. <clears throat> Wow, I guess we're done. Wait, 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 wait. Here we go. I'm in remission, supposedly, from non hodgkin lymphoma. I had chemo and immunotherapy. My IG level was 194. I've taken I, I, intravenous IGs. Treatment IGs of four level. What is your opinion on using it? Well, my opinion is <clears throat> it's okay when you're, you, to keep things balanced, but you need to keep what's happening if you're on chemo and all that sort of stuff. They just, they do, it, 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 it kind of masks things. Now you need to just cleanse, 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 cleanse. Eat healthy, eat healthy, meditate. All, all the stuff that we talk about, do that, do that all the way and meditate and, and say, and know that this gone. And no, you know, no, like imagine, not on your meditations. Meditation is not thinking. But at other times, imagine that your liver is pushing out all the IgG you need. Everything's in the right order, in the right thing. Just imagine it coming out perfectly. Beautiful, pink, delicious liver. Not delicious. Only to... Uh... Actually, I met a guy who uh, says that he eats the organs. But those he doesn't eat raw. He eats the muscle raw. So, but he doesn't eat the organs raw. Hmm. So, but anyway, big red liver producing all of these IGs. Yeah, that's it. Okay. All right, you guys, so it's nine o'clock my time, so that means it's whatever your time, and that means it's time to say aloha, so what do you come? And I'm really sorry away how this whole thing began today. I don't know what to say, but I'm really sorry, and I don't know how to fix it. 
So somebody, why don't you guys fly here? Help me. Swadikap, namaste, and aloha.